Hey folks, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting, and today I'm going to talk to you about finding a monster buck and then losing them. I start my scouting in February, and I try to do as much scouting as I possibly can February, March, and April. Uh, not only is it nice to be out when the snow is off the ground and you're still able to see the fresh sign, but without leaves on the trees, it's just so much easier to see further distances. I found about four or five different spots this year that I thought were going to be really ideal as I got closer to hunting season. I put cameras out for the summer and I've got about five or six real decent bucks that I think are shooters that I'm going after this fall. The biggest buck that I have is a double split brow tying 12 point who is an absolute monster. Right now he's probably got about a 19 inch spread and that was uh, when I saw the last picture of him on July 11th. This one place that I found was about four or five tenths of a mile walk away from the road. It was through some real thick stuff and there was a swamp and it had a whole bunch of real thick dense vegetation where I know that deer were bedding and they'd work across a road up through an oak flat. They'd come up along the edge of a stream on a natural funnel and then work their way up a finger of woods and out into hay fields and corn fields and some ag land. I took the time to get a camera out during the summer. Uh, I've got three or four different pictures of this buck that I was chasing. I got pictures of plenty of these other deer as they're walking uh, onto the private land uh, from the public and then from the private land back onto the public itself. When you take a look at the property itself, there's actually three trails that meet on public land about 10 yards away from the private. And there's a funnel that uh, carries deer along a steep edge of a creek bank and right where the area of the three trails meeting, I put a grapevine mock scrape and then the trail actually turns into one trail that goes on to private land. I ended up finding a place that I was going to put a tree stand a couple weeks before season opened up and uh, I had gone ahead and put that tree stand there and came back about a week later to go ahead and uh, put a cell cam in there and take my normal SD card camera out. When I got there, after all the work of scouting, of taking a camera out, building a grapevine mock scrape, and putting up this redneck ladder stand, I get there to put my cell camera in where I'm not gonna come back to this piece of property and hunt it again until the third week of October, so I'd have probably you know, four or five weeks of just totally being left alone. And the property owner adjacent to the public that I was hunting went ahead and dropped trees over the one trail that left public and went on to private. So I pulled my SD card, I came home, left the tree stand there thinking that maybe it still would be a decent spot to hunt. And in July, I had over 200 pictures on my camera in which probably 120 of those 200 pictures uh, were of deer. In, in early September, I had 24 pictures on my camera, only one of deer. So frustrating. So this farmer, I'm sure he's after the same deer that I'm after. Uh, I'm sure he saw my camera there, saw my grapevine mock scrape, and he saw my redneck ladder stand, and he dropped uh, brush and bushes across the path. And when he did that, it totally and completely changed the movement of the deer, and I have not seen this big buck since. Maybe it was just because of the fact he was moving from his summer range to his fall range, but either way, I look at it as I look back on public property to try to find where he's coming from. It's really difficult because all three of these trails that met at this one place go back into thick brush. So for me right now, I guess I'm gonna have to go back in in August uh, after a morning of hunting and take a look, see if I can find any fresh sign possibly see if I can get a camera on a fresh scrape and see if I can find this buck again. But right now, what I thought was gonna be one of my killer stands is done. I took that tree stand out of there, I moved it somewhere else, gonna focus my hunting on some other areas where I have some other big buck. And like I said, maybe I can come back in October and still find this guy. Uh, the only thing I'm really disappointed about is the farmer uh, tore down my grapevine mock scrape. Uh, just kind of ticks you off that people touch your stuff on public land. I understand what he did on private, it's his property. I never trespassed on his property, I never put my grapevine mock scrape on his property. 
Um, I just don't understand why he felt it was necessary to go ahead and rip my grapevine mock scrape down. At least he didn't touch my camera and touch my tree stand, so that's fortunate. Uh, but it's back to square one trying to find this monster of a buck. Man, double split brow tines. And he's a 12 point total and he is an absolute monster. Hopefully I end up getting a pick of him in October here and hopefully I get a chance to either get back on hunting him again or hopefully he's smart enough to go ahead and elude hunting this year and I can get him on camera come December and January and then refocus trying to find his, mo his movements uh, next fall. This map that I'm showing you guys, the white line is the boundary between public and private property. You can see on the south side of that property boundary that there are three separate trails that all come together and meet where I put a grapevine mock scrape with the brown symbol. You can see where my tree stand is and then I could see the trail continue onto the private property as it moved north up this finger of woods up towards the farmer's fields. The yellow is where the farmer dropped the trees over top of the trail and there's no doubt about it, it totally and completely changed the movement of these deer. That is just so frustrating. I spent so much time putting this redneck ladder stand in, hang on stand, prerogative of the landowner. I don't blame him one bit. I just have a feeling that he's after that same deer that I'm hunting. And I was putting my cell camera on here today. It was not gonna come back in here again until the heat of the rut, and I was gonna hunt this area based on what the cell pictures were sending back to me. One of the things that sucks about public land hunting, man. Hunting public land is definitely a lot different from private. I'm definitely excited to be on public this year and be able to bounce around a little bit to some specific properties that I've focused on my scouting this year, but I know I'm going to find frustration along the way as well. No doubt about it, as we get ready for season, some of these places that I think are going to be hot spots where I have found some big buck are going to have other hunting pressure there. And part of the challenge is learning where this pressure is and avoiding that pressure and still being able to find some of these bucks. So we'll see what happens this fall, but either way I look at it, just in a year and a half of taking this challenge of beginning to hunt public land, I've learned a ton, and I'm looking forward to the season to get started. Hey guys, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. See ya.